Hi guys. No skit today, I'm afraid. Due to the subject nature of this game, uh, we decided that a skit wouldn't be appropriate. And if you are affected by any of the issues depicted in this game, or that we talk about in the review, we just urge you to please get some help. Talk to your doctor, your friends, your family, anyone. Just, just talk to someone. On with the review. Hi guys. Welcome to another review from Overbite Gaming, and today we are reviewing Hellblade. Senor Sacrifice. Fice. Lice. Lice. <laughs> Sacrifice, yeah. Sac Sacrifices. Which mm. is a the latest game from Ninja Theory, who you may know from doing Heavenly Sword and Enslaved Odyssey to the West. west. <laughs> <laughs> you got confused earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I've been reading up about it and it's changing its stuff around. Uh, never mind. Anyway. Uh, yeah, today we're going to do a quick review of Senior Sacrifice um, because basically there's nothing else out at the moment. And it is, in certain ways, a landmark game as well. Yes, it is. Which we will come on to. So you can probably see behind us already um, some some gameplay. Yeah, we can't see that, Lee. Oh. I, I tell you this every time. <laughs> but we I have get chroma key and it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> but we have some, some gameplay going on behind us. Uh, I'll make sure that it's not uncovering too many story elements because that's a very strong part of this game. Um, what, Lee, tell, tell the beautiful people what this game is about. Which one's the beautiful one? That, that one there. Okay. Oh. Senua's Sacrifice is essentially a third person action come walking simulator come puzzle game. Um, it's set in, I think it was the... the the Orkney Isles. Orkney Isles. I was going to say the Pyrenees for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Pyrenees at all. I think it's because it's uh, she's a member of the Pick Clan, so yes. that's why I have the P thing going on. Um, and it's about basically she's trying to resurrect her lost love. I think is, is the best way of summing up the story. But she has many, many trials and tribulations, not all of which are physical. Uh, a massive, massive part of this game is actually the psychosis of which she suffers. Uh, where she has voices in her head that sometimes uh, insult until she can't do it, and then other times they'll be encouraging, possibly to her own detriment. And some of the psychosis, well not some, all of the psychosis is depicted in such a way that it's uh, been uh, researched and and discussed with people with illness, mental illness and with psychiatrists, etc., to try and get a real representation of what it would be like to have some of the symptoms that go on in, in the game. Um, such as loneliness, darkness, um, visual weirdness. Um, it's not a very nice term to use, but you know, understand what I mean. So there are varying puzzle elements that take this into account, as well as the actual, just just the visuals of the game. Um, we can both agree that the visuals are beautiful. Um, yes, they are. They do have that, there's a slight graininess to them, which you kind of find in a lot of games that have high quality graphics. Mm -hmm. But it's part of the course nowadays. But the, the main character, the main pr um, protagonist is uh, one of the actual members of Ninja Theory mm -hmm. who are making this game. She she does an awesome job uh, emoting. Yeah, both physically and uh, vocally. I mean, the, the, the visuals of the face is obviously a mocap kind of situation, um, as well as all the movement. But I have to say, the facial expressions are probably the cleanest I've seen. Yeah, um, some of them are a little... I don't want to say over, maybe overdone would be the word I actually do want to use because um, there's a lot of eye rolling going on. <laughs> eye rolling? Eye rolling. She has like this thing where she's just like bugging her eyes out and be like. But she's scared and like confused. Well, yeah, but like those big eyes, they just pop him. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that was an intention joke. Um, but yes, yeah, so I think the visuals of the game are really, really good. Now, what you'll actually be doing within the game, uh, to give it some context, You'll be on your journey to save your loved one um, and journeying into hell in very kind of nice Norse mythology type stuff yeah. going on. And you'll basically have, like, like Lee said, a lot of walking around, taking in the scenery, uh, environment based puzzles, and you'll be doing line of sight puzzles for the most part of the game. Yeah, I mean, the, the puzzles are well constructed, they're well thought out, and they're well executed, but there's far too many of certain types of puzzles in my opinion uh, there's there's many instances where to open a door you need to find uh, shapes in the geometry around you and 
like you get sometimes you have to like find three to open a door and it does give you visual cues and audio cues as to where you need to be but like doing it for like the tenth time where you oh, it's just it gets a little bit boring to be fair but I think the fact you don't have any tutorial any hard showing you like indicators or anything the only thing you do have is on Senua's belt halfway through the game yeah of when you can do your special attack type thing uh, which we'll get onto the combat in a minute um, but the I think that because of the focus I think has been placed on the the psychosis and how to represent that and build that into a game perhaps they haven't spent as much time on diversifying the puzzles diversifying the actual gameplay as much as some people would like yeah I think I don't know if this is going to sound weird or not, but it's almost as if most games would have like the story and then it would have elements that accentuate the story. Mm -hmm. Whereas for me, this feels more like her emotional problems and her psychosis is, is the framework and the story is just there to serve experiencing that. Yeah, I think that's pretty clear. I think I, I have to agree with you in that respect, but I still yeah, think there's a come on. <laughs> there is definitely <laughs> there is definitely a story there, um, and the way I'm not going to ruin the game, but it does feel like there's going to be a sequel or there, there's openings for you to have another ex, ex, you know uh, episode of Senua's story, which I'm not quite sure how it's going to work because like the big hit, the big kind of. USP of this game is like, look what psychosis is like in a, mm. in a video game. So to do that again would be a bit stale, so I'm not quite sure what they'll do there. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, they do capture it really well. I mean, we've both had dark periods in our lives, and certainly a lot of what it brings up, I was able to relate to. I mean, I can't speak for Snare, but I mean, she goes on about talking about feeling like a different person inside, and I've had moments in my life where that has absolutely been the case. And this is why we didn't want to do the skit, because yeah. this stuff isn't. I mean, it's not. It's not taboo. Okay, it's. Uh, uh, Anton mentioned the whole taboo subject on his review. Um, from Anton and Arthur show, go check him out. Um, <laughs> but it's not taboo. But at the same time, it's not something to make fun of because yeah. I think there's a lot of stigma s still around it, so it's difficult to get the, the issues home. And what they've done here is something amazing, and I respect them for that. And props absolutely to doing a game focusing on this subject but at the same time we don't want to make fun of it no exactly i think we're coming to a period now where we're getting out of the mindset of just saying you know pull yourself together and shit like that and actually recognizing these things as legitimate problems so this game in itself okay uh it has all the puzzles that kind of do go on a little bit and have too much time and you know after the tenth time it gets a bit boring but let's get on to the combat because the combat is few and far between it's kind of like set pieces it's not constant enemies all the way through but when that combat happens it's good shit huh I really enjoyed the combat <laughs> it's it's not it's not hugely deep there's, you've got a light attack um, a strong you're attack you've four buttons basically isn't a it? melee and a dodge and you've got a parry as well uh, but it really works nicely it's very fluid it looks good um, and it has a few interesting little unique parts in the fact that you have voices in your head and the voices are constant yeah they are they will just go on and on at you all the way and you bit. must play this with headphones oh god yes um, this is probably the first game I've played in headphones ever I started playing it while I was like watching Netflix and had the subtitles on I just do this and then about 20 minutes later I was like I really can't do it like this so I had to go to headphones no, the, the headphones, they actually recorded it with a binaural microphone, which basically looks like a small head with two ears, and they have actors walking around whispering stuff at it, and it is that constantly for the entire game. Mm. Now, some people don't like that, some people do. Um, I'm one of the do. <laughs> I liked it. I like having women whisper things in my ear. But it's so freaky. It's like the most freaky thing I've had in a video game without being scared in my life. I mean, there are, there are parts where they use it um, to enhance. There's no, like, jump scares or anything, but uh, certainly they, they do use it to good use, what, to create a mood. I mean, it's like going mm. into dark caverns with a torch and you can hear, like, something off in the distance or, or a screaming coming that you have to try and track down by using your eyes. And also there's things like if you are walking down a certain path, you'll get a voice going, she doesn't know where she's going. <laughs> but this, she's so stupid. And it's like, it's really weird. Because, you know, I'm not a woman. 
<laughs> he's just but, not in touch with his, his feminine side. Don't worry about it. It, it's, it still feels like they're talking to you, but they're not talking to Senua because you've got so immersed with this character that they are talking to you. It's a very strange feeling. Yeah, also, I... I, I they are, they're right here, aren't they? They're yeah. right just by your ears. Yeah, but... but yeah. I like that, <laughs> no, but they do. I know Snare disagrees with this, but I, I got a definite feeling that at a certain point in the game, that they, they sort of start out being sort of like an antagonist in that they're putting you down and saying you can't do it, stuff like this, and then you reach a certain point in the game where it's almost like they start to believe in you, and then are more helpful. It's like you, you're trying to get up somewhere, and they're like, "Don't you tell me about this? You haven't done the profits. Let's look up. It's up there." I had some moments of that, but I didn't feel they were getting better. Maybe because I had more um, damage than you. Because one of the things yeah. they do in this game, they, they, uh, they talk about the rot, which is basically like a, a cancer that she picks up on her hand, and then as you fail and die each time, it, it gets further and further up your arm. Uh, if it gets to her brain, then game's over, apparently. But it takes a long time for that to actually happen, because I died a lot in a certain place in the game, thinking, I've oh, fucked this up, I'm going to have to start again. Um, but maybe because of that we had different experiences don't know if it was that sophisticated don't but know, for me it felt like the voices kind of realised that if you die they die so I had that yeah yeah so mm -hmm. they become more helpful in an effort of like preserving themselves so maybe they're not altruistic but they're helping you to help themselves yeah and the the whole the thing is I think with this product and I'm not even going to call it a game yet with this product Right, you're going to get an experience, not just a game. And I think for that, that's what you're actually paying for. It's a bit like going. I mean, the game took me about seven hours. Yeah, I'd say it was around um, as well. It's not a long game, but you think about how much you know a film is. Film is like two hours long. And when, I mean, if you go to the cinema, you pay for 3D, you pay for popcorn, pay for drinks. You're going to be paying more to see yeah. an hour and a half movie than you are to get this game because it's priced differently as well. Yeah, and I think with the sort of balance pound for pound, you're going to get a lot of stuff from that. And I think you're paying for the, the love and the craft that's gone into the game. But I think you really are paying for an experience. It's a bit like, a bit like VR. You're paying for an experience, not necessarily the thing you're doing, um, but just how you access it. And I mean, if you took away those voices around your head, it will be a bog standard kind of average puzzle game. I think... That would be slightly unfair to it, but I think it would lose a lot if if you took away the viral. Yeah, thing. yeah. I, th I think it would be. I think the the thing about the game to me is that it's it's trying something new and succeeding, which is unusual recently. Yeah, because normally when they try something new, it's something that no one really wanted and no, no one really cares about. And it, it's been given the title, whether they gave this to to it themselves or not, of indie AAA. I can fucking get in the sea, mate. I don't, <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah, we had a good long conversation about that. So, to me, the idea of indie AAA is saying it's an indie game trying to be AAA. Whereas, at the moment, most AAA games are watered down, empty, shallow franchises, repeated, um, trying to squeeze the last dollar and pound out of you. It just, I don't think indie games really want to do that. And if they do, then they're just a, a bad AAA studio. <laughs> yeah. But I think with these guys, they're doing something that's good, and they're they're putting in the, the extra effort to make it look like the the polish that you would get with a AAA, um, but with a bit more substance underneath of of well, not substance, but yes, there's, game. There's, there's no tower climbing to be found. No. <laughs> but I think if you took away the graphics, and this is what I also said to you earlier, took away the graphics. And the the actual the fidelity of the faces and the movement and the emotions that part was probably a huge part of the budget. Um, it would be a bog standard game. I think it would be a class class as an indie game rather than a indie triple A. Yeah, but I mean, by taking those things away, you, you're you're eliminating what they've done to try and make it triple A. So it would indeed be an indie game. Yeah, and I, I mean, I like. I like the concept of that. I think it. You're, I love this game, by the way. I'm not not saying it's a bad game. <laughs> I, I think I, I love the concept of having like this mid-range price where they're still trying to make it as slick as all the big studios but actually have something more interesting going as well I think uh, your opinion on the name depends on where you think what you think about AAA titles I mean certainly nowadays you're quite correct in what you're saying that they're all vacuous and shallow and retreads of what we already have uh, but you know 
10, 15 years ago, that wasn't necessarily the case for all games. No, I think it's just a cultural thing now. Um, I, I will say something quite quite confident here. I think Senna has got a, a Hellblade, Senna Sacrifice has got a good chance of being game of the year. Yeah, I mean... It, it probably won't win it, but I think it's got a good chance. Uh, it ticks all of the boxes for pretentious critics, basically. <laughs> well, it does do that, but I mean, it does fall down in a few places, yes. um, which doesn't, you know. Whereas to me, like Grand Theft Auto V was as close to a perfect game as you could get. You weren't able to go first person view with the prostitutes. That was bad. Why not let us do okay. that? We can be first right, calm, person calm, everywhere calm, else, calm, but not calm, with the prostitutes. Calm, I want calm, to see my dick calm, go in. Come. Sorry. <laughs> there have been extra budget for dicks going in. Um, one up for six. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never be a six. Uh, but yes, I think Grand Theft Auto V was to me the most perfect game. And I think with, with Hellblade, it kind of has a few shortcomings. One, camera. There's moments where the camera gets stuck behind a wall or in the, in the belly of another enemy when you're fighting. And it just, it's really irritating because you get stuck and you can't get out and it's just certainly near the end when you have more enemies that you're fighting at the same time mm. it can get a little bit screwy um, it's yeah but it, I think a lot of it's done on purpose as well because mm, it, it, it is framed purpose. very tightly behind you during combat so um, you can't you don't have the field of view to see enemies come in like in God of War or something yes like no that. I, I understand that but it's certainly being stuck uh, no, inside I think, the I think that, that, in the, that that um, that makes the problems with the camera more obvious because it is so tight in. Oh, okay. Yes, it does. Um, and also this, the kind of save profile functionality, which was picked up by Mr. Jim Sterling, who um, ended up giving this game a 1 out of 10. Well, he did go back and revisit it. He did go back. I'll give him that. But at the same time, he was just being a pretentious, um, I want to get this out on day one, knobhead, even though he probably says he doesn't and isn't like that. It came across that way. Well, the fact that he retracted is his review from Metacritic and stuff like that yeah you yeah. obviously realise he made a boo boo a boo boo but I think the save profile is a problem because there isn't any other save profile apart from the one you've got and you're playing so there's kind of a weirdness of uh, just you, you kind of get feel like you can get stuck yeah I mean I'd, I'd watch Jim's review and so I was very very much on the lookout for torches <laughs> so I went through but uh, there didn't seem to be any point in the game where um, you were that far away from another torch that you couldn't pick one up if you missed one. So whether or not they changed the game after mm, maybe all that. I mean, the one that he missed uh, it, that hasn't changed. It hasn't. You know, okay. it's just well, it's just him being an idiot. Okay. <laughs> um, but, but to props to him, I mean, he did mention quite a few times that he was so up for you know praising this game mm. for what it had done and what it tried to do, and I think. You'll have a great time with it. It's certainly a game that you'll you'll get. I would say you still get your bang for your buck here. I mean, it's what twenty something quid. Twenty five. Twenty five quid, um, and you're spending five, probably between six to eight hours on an easy medium playthrough. Um, it's not gonna like you could do it over a weekend quite easily um, if you have that much time over a weekend. Obviously. Yeah, I mean, I did it in two sittings. So. Yeah, it's. It, I just I couldn't stop playing it when I was playing it, and that's the sign of a good game to me. I couldn't stop playing it when I was playing it either because that was the only time I had to finish it in order to do this review. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think, I have nothing but good things to say about the game, and it's one of those. If if you find a game where you have to say to someone you've got to just play it, you can't tell them how good it is. You can try, but until you sit down and put the headphones on. You, then you realise how good this game is. Yeah, um, anything I, I say negative about the game is, is going to be pretty nitpicky. To be yeah, fair. me too. Me too. Uh, and if you can only nitpick, it's kind of like, well, you think you've done your job right. I think it's, I think it won't appeal to all people, though. No. I think uh, people that haven't gone through perhaps some of the problems that Senua is going through won't. It will either open their eyes or they just won't get it. Yeah, I mean, some of the things are quite subtle. Um, you get periods where you're plunged into darkness. Uh, you have some weird mosaic uh, visuals going on. You'll have um, just blurriness um, and kind of not able to make things out. I mean, there's just lots of visual stuff they've done, as well as the the voices of the psychosis going around ahead. Um, but I think I think most people would would get the impact, but not get the meaning. Mm. 
but you also have those people that are more mechanically based so mm. um they will come in and they'd be like i'm just walking around looking at shit and the fighting's not deep and why am i playing this yeah waste of my money yeah but you, you're gonna have people like that and you know there's no problem with them wanting that out of a game you know some people just get more out of the mechanics than they do from the storyline or anything like that i think the big difference to me between triple a yes i did do quotation marks um AAA games and indie games, I think is evident by this kind of game having not a very good marketing strategy of getting their name out there and getting the game out there. No, I, mean, I think a lot of people didn't realise what the game was. Yeah, and certainly we didn't realise it was, well, I realised it was coming, but I didn't really pay attention to it until it was on the Steam page and I just thought, I'll have a look. Uh, but the, even the, like, the banner on the Steam page is pretty boring. It's nothing that's going to grab you. It's just our face looking up, we're kind of confused. And you're just like, Mm, it's not exactly pulling me in. That's what she said. Um, but enough. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this game has so many good parts to it that you can't you can't ignore that. And I think, to me, I mean, we're in a period of the year where there are no other triple A's out, and I'm thankful it came out now. Do you not think we'd have had the time to fully? I th no, I think it's because there's nothing else. Well, nothing else that we're interested in coming out right now. There are games being released, but um, it, it had its I own time to morning. shine. Watch out for a let's play of that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it it came across as a time when it, it had its time to shine. So I think for that, it's very very cool. Um, so what would you give it out of ten? Let's just go down to basics. Okay, out of ten, um, I would give it an eight. 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 I would give it a nine. Yeah, I thought you might. Mm. To me, this is a nine out of ten. Um, yes, I'm agreeing with Anton, who also gave it a similar rating. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, no, I, I think to me, it's one of those things where I put my controller down, took my headphones off after finishing the game, and just felt affected by it. You know, it had done something with me afterwards. I mean, I have no problem telling you guys at home, like for the last hour of the game I was in tears <laughs> see yeah he cries at anything I do <laughs> he cries at a cornflake packet I cried at Spider-Man 2 not Amazing Spider-Man 2 I'm not that sick the Sam Raimi one yeah. <laughs> you've just removed any credibility from that statement now what that I cry at anything I've like, proved it <laughs> whatever <laughs> no, the fact that okay you cry at Spider-Man 2 and that has mean, no meaning to I cried. I, I cried at our Uncharted 4 review <laughs> <laughs> But I have to say, this game does, if you play it and get immersed and let yourself get in, involved in the game, you'll be taken across this little story, um, affected by all this stuff, um, get involved in some combat, which is not difficult to pick up, and you'll, at the end of it, go, wow, oh, right, I need to watch something funny. You yeah. know, just need to, I need to bring myself back to the normal world. So, well done to Ninja Theory. You've done an excellent job. Hats off. Nice. You did. You saluted. I stroked my beard. <laughs> <Bomb them. laughs> now I, I, I absolutely understand what you say. For me, the meat of the game is definitely in following Senua and her progression through her psychoses and the experiences she has. Um, if you took the graphics away and the binaural away, it would lessen it, but I would still think it would be pretty strong because of that. Um, the, the way I think what falls down is with the mechanics of the game and by my sight puzzles. Uh, I like the combat, but I could have done with more of it personally. So that's why I think it's an A. I think it's a very affecting, powerful game and something that's very important uh, in the industry to, for both the purposes of bringing attention to psychosis and also to try this sort of slightly new thing where it's it's a mid-range title. I mean, know we have them in the past, but never. There are more and more of those coming along. Yeah. So it's good to see. But that is our review of Hellblade. Mm. Hope you enjoyed it. We have plenty of other videos on the channel. Quite a lot. So uh, feel free to go and check them out. We do have videos come out every... Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. Yay! At 6pm now. Yeah, 6pm. BST. Yes. So um, look forward to more of those. And please subscribe and uh, ring the bell. Uh, so you can hear about... Get notifications on future videos. And uh, like the video because it helps us out a great deal. Indeed. Now I'm going to go off and cry when I watch the rushes for this.
Look at you using film terms. I know, he's, he's corrupting me. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, thanks very much for watching. Catch you next time. Take it easy, guys. Bye. He's spending 60% of his life locked in his fucking car shooting the same things over and over. Okay, that's a good point. We'll come on to this now. So, in this game, we now have access to... I don't know if it was in the last game or not. I didn't play that one, but the, the risk is much higher as well. Yeah, it's not just a PvP area either. Um, it's an area that allows PvP, but there are uh, AI enemies in there, and they're all hella tough. It's definitely designed for cooperative play in there. Yeah, and I'd actually suggest...